trying to communicate to you something of the good news of the gospel, to tell you something of the glad tidings of great joy that our Savior has given to us. He tells us that if we believe in him, we will be saved. If we get to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then we will have everlasting life. As our minister was saying to you, we all have a problem. We have the problem of sin. Every one of us does things that we shouldn't do. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner, and so are you. And sin is a big problem, because God is holy, and God has made us in his own image. He's made us like himself in order to live holy lives and in order to serve him in this world. But when we sin, we are not serving God, we are doing the opposite, we are doing the things that God hates. God is holy, God will judge us, and you and I sin against God. In a sense, there is nothing easier for us to do than to sin. But then, the glad tidings of the gospel, there's nothing easier than to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. If only we would realize our need, there's nothing simpler than to be saved. Now it's not that it didn't cost God a great deal. Our salvation is something that was only obtained at great expense. It was through God giving his Son to be our Savior. God spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. How thankful we should be that God in his love sent his Son into this world. God loves to save. He's given us a law. A law that we cannot keep. A law that we should keep. There's nothing wrong with the law. The law is good. But there's something wrong with us in that we are selfish. And we love pleasing ourselves. And we love doing our own thing. But God has called us to repent of our sins. And he has given to us a savior. Because if we continue in sin, we will end up, when we die, in hell. The Bible tells us that there is such a place. Lots of people think that when you die, that's the end. There's nothing. But there is something. We are creatures who know in ourselves that death is not the end. There's life after death. And lots of people think that when you die, everyone goes to heaven. But that's not true. The Bible tells us there's a judgment day. And we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. If we are good, perfectly good, we will go to heaven. But there's none perfect. There's none righteous. No, not one. We are all sinners. That's why we need a Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ was perfect. He lived a perfect life. And then he died in the Roman place of sinners. He didn't die because he had to die. He died because he loved us. And he took our place and he took our sins. And he suffered in our room instead so that we would be forgiven. The Son of God became the Son of Man in order to make us sons of men and daughters of men, sons and daughters of God. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How wonderful it is that everlasting life is on offer for those who don't deserve it. You and I deserve God's wrath and curse. 
the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God there is a gift. A gift of salvation. A gift of everlasting life. And a gift of heaven. When we die, it's good to have somewhere to go to. It's good to have a place with God in heaven. How horrible it would be if when we died, we ended up in a lost eternity. In that place that Jesus often spoke about, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. The worm is always eating away and the fire is always burning. But friends, there's another place, heaven, and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Look to me, come to me, and you'll be saved. That's what Jesus said. And if we take Jesus as our own personal Savior, we will be saved. Yes, there are those who think that this is rubbish, but God has revealed it to us in the Bible. God has spoken to us. We have got to know it personally ourselves. We know the one in whom we believe and we are persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed unto him against the great day. One day you and I will be judged and whatever we say in this life, whatever we believe in this life, however we live here, we will have to stand and give our account there's a great white throne going to be set up and the Lord Jesus Christ will stand upon that throne and every one of us will stand before him and our whole life will be examined by the Lord. And sadly, if we are to be judged according to our works, there's no hope for us. That's why we need a Savior and that's why we come out to tell you about the Savior that came into this world 2,000 years ago. God in his great love sent Jesus. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The Lord Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. And Christ says to us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So many people, they're looking for happiness and money, looking for happiness and parties, looking for happiness and holidays, looking for happiness and drink, and all these things at the end of the day are quite empty. You're all excited about your holiday, and then it's over and it's back to work, and it's not been all that great. There's been all these problems, all these difficulties, things that have gone wrong. But the wonderful thing is that when we have Jesus Christ, then we have the key to life. He gives us victory over our addictions. He can enable us to overcome an addiction to drink, to drugs, whatever problem we have in our lives. There's some people and they have a problem with gambling. They, can, they just can't stop gambling. But when you ask Christ into your life, you can seek his help and his power and he gives to you his Holy Spirit which strengthens you so that you're able to live a new life. He sets us free. The Bible talks about the glorious liberty of the children of God. It's a wonderful thing to be free. Free from sin, free from Satan, free to serve the Lord, free to enjoy God. God has given to us a purpose in life. He has said we are to glorify him and to enjoy him. And it's wonderful that we can, we can enjoy him. Many people think that the Christian life is a very dull and dreary life, but it's actually the very opposite. There's a joy in being a Christian, a wonderful joy. Joy, the Bible talks of it as joy unspeakable and full of glory. How wonderful it is to have that joy in your heart. How wonderful to have peace with God, the peace that passes knowledge. How wonderful to have all your sins forgiven. 
being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. It is God that justifieth, who is he that condemneth? If we have God justifying us, that's wonderful. God pardoning our sins, God on our side, God for us in this life, God as our God and we as his people. It's a wonderful thing to be able to call God your Father. Can you say today that God is my Father? It's a wonderful thing to be able to say that. And when we have God as our Father, He looks after us, He cares for us, He watches over us, He provides for us, He protects us, and one day He'll bring us to heaven to be with Himself. God is your Father. But you can't have God as your father unless you first repent of your sins. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die? Why will you die when God is offering to you eternal life? Come to Christ, come to God through Christ. Come and be saved, come and experience forgiveness of sin. We come out here to try and communicate this to you because sadly so many today don't bother going to church. They carry on with their lives, very busy with work, busy with our family, busy with our pleasures, and then one day death comes and suddenly they find that they've wasted their life in this world and it's too late. They're lost. The door to heaven is shut against them, and the door of hell opens to, to receive them. So friends, we would encourage you to seek the Lord while he may be found, to put your trust in him, to get to know him personally as your own God and Savior. It's a wonderful thing to have God as your Savior. God is our refuge and our strength. God is our shepherd. God is our friend, God with us, not against us, God for us. How wonderful it is to have God for us. So friends, seek the Lord, seek him with all your heart, put your trust in him, put your confidence in him, pray to God, if you pray to him, he will answer you. Just a few moments ago I was talking to a man who said, it's all rubbish. It's all rubbish. There's nothing in it. But friends, I know it's not rubbish. I know there's something in it. I know this God. And I know him personally. And I've got to know him. And I have a personal relationship with him. Yes, you can know him too. And it's important for you that you get to know this God. It's not simply a matter of being good. It's not even simply a matter of believing certain facts. It's a matter of a personal relationship with the living God. It's a matter of asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to be your Savior, to lead you, to guide you, to keep you, to be the shepherd of your soul watching over you every day, to be the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord for he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Isn't it wonderful that there's mercy with God? Isn't it wonderful that he offers to us abundant pardon? If we come to him, if we seek him, if we put our trust in him, if we ask Jesus Christ into our hearts and lives, he will come and he will save us. Jesus came from heaven into this world to seek and to save sinners. He came to take our place, to save us, to die for us on the cross and to rise again. He is risen, the only man that's ever risen from the dead, never to die again. He's risen. He's Lord, he's mighty and powerful, he's conquered death and the grave, and he gives to us everlasting life. I am, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
and he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Never die in the sense of going to a miserable lost eternity, but rather closing, closing your eyes on this life and opening them in the bliss and blessedness of heaven. So friends, I encourage you to, to think about these things, get a, get a Bible and read it, think about what the Bible says. God speaks to us through the Bible. As you read it, God in heaven speaks through it, and the page of scripture can become alive. And I would encourage you also to go to a church where the gospel is preached. Go to a church where, where Christ is proclaimed. We would invite you to come along to our church at uh, Partick, Free Church Continuing, and Two Thornwood Terrace, just up from the police station. Come along on a Sunday, 11 o'clock or uh, 6 p.m. Come along to the church and you can join in the services there and hear God's word explained and preached. And if you have questions, come and speak to us. We're delighted to try and explain to you the great things of the Bible and the way of salvation which Christ has given us. Christ is the Savior, the only Savior. Look to him, trust in him, Take him to yourself as your saviour and you will be saved. Thank you.